Good morning and welcome to Revelation Church Online. We invite you to join us as we enter now into worship. I would have lost her had I not believed. You know all the plans you had for me. I would have lost her had I not resolved. There is no good thing that you withhold. All the while 
You keep saying, trust that I am custom making everything for good. Yes, you are. All the while, you keep saying, trust that I am more constrained.
It's all you got to just be strong. Just remember that you are a fighter, a fighter. I know you think that you are too far gone. But hope is never lost. Hope is never lost. Church Online. Um, 
you know, it's, it's so hard to speak to a congregation that is not here, but I know you guys are together with us as we speak. So we're gonna, so today we're gonna study something that is a, a little complicated, but pray and, and God is gonna reveal to you what he means by teaching you these things, okay? So we're gonna um, study from this uh, book of Hebrew, which is Jesus Christ has entered as a foreigner. So Jesus entered as a foreigner for us. Jesus, the anointed man, is our foreigner. What does it mean? From the book of Hebrew, chapter 6, verse 19. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil, where Jesus has entered as a foreigner for us, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now we need to understand one thing. The scripture calls Jesus not only a foreigner. A foreigner is a person that comes and goes to a place where no one has gone before. But so he's entering heaven and then the scriptures calls him a high priest. When the scripture which were written by anointed men of God. You cannot change it. It cannot be changed, okay? So we see Jesus Christ, the foreigner, entering heaven, but he's entering heaven as a high priest. And then, you know, the Lord is uh, explained to us, uh, he does according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, who is that? Who is that priest, Melchizedek? We're going to study a little bit so you may comprehend. Then Jesus Christ is like Melchizedek. He's not Melchizedek. He is like. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem. Now he's the king of peace. Salem is the word Shalom, the king of Shalom. The king of peace, a priest of the Most High God who met Abraham as he was returning, returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed them. So Abraham got blessed by this amazing high priest. Now, a lot of people believe, oh, that was Jesus, uh, see, that was blessing Abraham. No, this, it doesn't say there was Jesus. If the scripture wants to call him Jesus, you would have seen it, but you don't see it there. So you, you, you need to understand not to give up to imaginations. And, and these are the, one of the imaginations. And, and I heard that, oh, see, uh, uh, Melchizedek was Jesus. No, no, he wasn't. And if he was, you have to prove to me through scripture that he was. To whom also Abraham apportioned a tenth part of all the spoils. The tenth part, that means he was giving his tithe, was first of all by the translation of his name, King of Righteousness, and then also King of Shalom. Remember, we talk about that. The King of Peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God. No made the Son of God. And this is a scripture I'm, I was speaking about, made like the Son of God. So he remains a priest forever, perpetually here. Now observe how great this man was to whom Abraham, the patriarch, gave 
the tenth of the choicest spoils. You know, the Lord attribute and, and, and give the right to priests or high priests to receive the tithe from the people. The very same way in the New Testament, the Lord is so faithful and he gives the right to those who preach the gospel to receive money from the gospel. Now, many, they don't comprehend that, or many do not want to comprehend that, and they give nothing. And I want to thank, by the way, all our congregation. You guys are so faithful, and God bless you. You, you guys have been given, and, and I'm encouraging you, not for me, not for God. God doesn't need money. God does not need money. But as you give, as you become obedient to the Scripture, Oh my God, see, well, see, I have a problem because you see, uh, we are in a virus time or whatever you call it. COVID-19 is there. So we don't have the money. Now, if you want to prosper in such time as, the, uh, as this times, you give and you become obedient to God. As you become obedient to God, you, all of a sudden, your money, your bank account, uh, your, your food, uh, you, you go to the, uh, uh, to, to, wh whatever you're going. You go to Walmart and, and all of a sudden, you know, you, your paper will be there. <laughs> I know it's a joke, but you know what? It's not really a joke. The chicken will be the last one. Oh, oh my God, look, at, we, have a, we have chicken. You want it? And God will bless you. He will bless you. Why? Because God needs your money? No, he doesn't. He, it's a question of obedience. Now, a lot of people, they don't want to give for whatever reason. They have decided in their spirit not to give. Well, God is going to judge that. Okay, but again, I want to thank you guys. You, uh, and I'm not talking about you guys. You, you have been so faithful. And, and just watch. Just watch how God is going to bless you. So the very same way we see Abraham uh, giving a tenth, the best choices, not the last thing, the best choices, the, the best to God. And those indeed of the sons of Levi who receive the priest's office have a commandment in the law. Remember I told you uh, the Levites would... Uh, descendants from Aaron the priest, the high priest, uh, have the right to receive, uh, they had the right to receive the tithe. Now, the very same way in the New Testament, those who preach the gospel, I'll let you decide who is preaching the gospel and who's not. They have received from God the very same rights. Oh yeah, but you see, uh, we see Paul uh, not taking the, you know, th that was Paul's decision. That was his decision. And, and, and that was in order to bless God, number one, number two, to bless the people. But that was his, it, 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 the, the very same way uh, 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 Paul was not married. He said, you know what, I have, I have received this gift. I, I, I don't want to be married. Now, does it mean because he's not married, no, none of the priests or none of the pastors going to be married ever? Of course not. So the Levites are commanded by God to collect the tenth of the people, and that was right. Then is from their brethren, although these are descended from Amen. So that's awesome. For they indeed became priests without an oath. But he, Jesus, went with a oath through the one who said to him. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? The Lord has sworn, and he will not change his mind. This is, this is he speaks his, to his son, the firstborn. What is his name? Jesus, the anointed man, or Jesus, the Christ. Look how he calls him. You are priest forever. What? Excuse me, Lord. C could you please repeat that? 
you are a priest forever. Is this how you call Jesus the Christ? Well, the Heavenly Father calls him priest forever. You are a priest forever. So much the more, also, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. So you see, the, one more time, he is the forerunner. But Pastor Gab, Pastor Gab, Pastor Gab, sit down, sit, sit down a second. Why do you keep on telling us that he is the forerunner? The Lord Jesus Christ prepared, remember we said to his disciples, say, where I'm going, you cannot go, at least for now. But I'm going to prepare you a place, a mansion, because there are many mansions in my father's house. Remember that? So, wherever the Lord Jesus Christ has gone through, it is and it was the plan of God for you to go and for me to go through the same thing. See, hence is the substitute of our death, in, in other words, when he dies, we don't have to physically die. But spiritually, when he dies, we die together with him. That is not easy. I can understand. It is not easy to comprehend. Even me, I, I, I never understood until the Lord said to me, so listen, yes, I'm your substitute, okay? But now you need to comprehend that I am also your forerunner. So that means wherever I'm going, you're going to go also. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I, I thought it, I escaped death. The Lord said, physically you escaped it, but spiritually you need to go and die together with me. This is what the Lord meant when he spoke through the Apostle Paul. I have been crucified with Christ. I live I live now, I live, but I've been crucified, okay, I live, yet no longer I. What? You, you know how many years I, I'm meditating on this Galatians chapter 2, verse 19, 20? You know how many years? Years of meditating, and I'm not pretending, I'm not saying I have the answer. Maybe you have the answer. God bless you. If you do, please share. I've been crucified with Christ. This is what the Apostle Paul explained. Now, the very same way, the same Apostle explained in the book of Romans chapter 6, another difficult back, back, uh, passage. He said, us we die, who die with Christ, should we live in sin again? And of course, the answer is no. If you die, what, what would you go back to, uh, to the sinful nature? Because the one who dies, he said, has been freed, has been freed from the sinful nature, from the, he calls this sin. And now I'm totally lost. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make it very, very simple. The Lord told us that Jesus Christ is a foreigner. When he dies, you die. When he is resurrected, you are resurrected. How complicated can this be? And of course, he gives the example of uh, Melchizedek in this, in this case. Well, we, we are totally confused with Mel the story of Melchizedek in that case. Why are you using him? Well, w should I rephrase it? Why is the scripture using him? That is the question. The reason why they use, he uses uh, the book of Hebrew, they're using uh, Melchizedek was to show that Melchizedek have no beginning, no generation. We, we, we didn't know his mom. We didn't know his dad. Uh, and he was ma made like Christ Jesus. But now Jesus Christ has a generation. We know who he is, where he's coming from, or when he, where he is today. You see, so that is just an example. An example. And then God calls Jesus Christ, you are today my high priest. And, and not only that, with the oath, forever. In case if anyone wants to change, 
And, and, I'm, and I'm sure there are people that, oh my God, oh no, 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 Jesus Christ cannot be the high priest. Uh, he can't. But you, you're going to have to give an, an explanation to God for that. Because you are calling God someone that is uh, lying here. You know, he, he cannot lie. The Father cannot lie. Well, okay, how is this helping me, Pastor Cam? Uh, uh, how is this message going to help me? Well, it, it's, it's going to help you greatly because wherever the Lord Jesus Christ has gone, God expects for you to go as well. Your sinful nature is the culprit. God wants your sinful nature to be destroyed. He wants you, that's what he meant by your sins are forgiven. But you need to comprehend that. A lot of people don't, do not comprehend it. And if you struggle with any sin, it could be greediness, it could be anything, anything. P put your sin in there. The, the, I, I'm sure there's one sin or two or three even, which you are struggling with. It, it's making you ashamed. It makes you small makes you guilty, makes you condemned. But the Lord wants you to see yourself this morning as crucified with him to it. Once you comprehend you have been crucified to it, to the sin that is, you will wake up and you will get up. You will be raising up as a brand new person as a brand new person. Now the main point in what has been said, the book of Hebrew chapter 8 verse 1, is this. We have such a high priest who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Wow! The Lord Jesus Christ is sinning as a high priest in the position of authority and power. Remember, he said in the book of Hebrew, uh, Matthew uh, uh, chapter 28, I believe, uh, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. What are you talking about? If the Lord Jesus Christ has received the authority, now, the very same glory that he received from the Father, he bestowed, or he gave to you. The same authority he received, he gave to you. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ is called the King of Kings. Who are those kings? He's called the Lord of Lords. Who are those lords? And if a foreigner has opened the way to a father, to a heavenly father, then many sons and many daughters are willing to come in as well. And that is the beauty of the gospel. The gospel means good news. That is a amazing good news. Jesus Christ, look, he's called a minister. Latrio, this is not the doulos. Uh, in the Greek, doulos means servant, like a slave servant. Here, the minister here is a latrio. It's someone that serves God in, in, in a godly way, in, in, a, in a heavenly way. A minister in a sanctuary in, in the true tabernacle or the true temple which the Lord God pitched. No man. Remember he said you will do, you will build everything according to what I'm showing you. When God speaks to Moses, he said, observe, go into the spirit first. Spend time with me. Spend time with me. Be, be, be listening. And be watching. Because it's going to, the, 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 the temple that I want you to build here on earth is 100% is 
a, um, an image of the new temple that, that will be built in heaven by Jesus himself. When the Lord wants to reveal something to you, and sometimes it's very difficult in that microwave generation, I wanted to call it, very, very difficult because we need everything right now. Let's say you pray for a husband, you pray for a wife, pray for friends, you pray for whatever you're praying for, but you don't see it. You don't see it. You know why you don't see it? Because you want it right away, your way, when you decide it, I want it now, and this is it. And because of that, many months are lost, many, many years are lost. And all the Lord wants you to understand is just go in. Go in. Ask me. I will show you. Remember the Lord said, you know, thank you, Father, because you, you always hear me. You always hear me. But I, 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 I pray because I, uh, I want them to understand that. He's talking about the people from Lazarus. You know, they were waiting for him to resurrect Lazarus. See, I spoke because of them, not because of you or me. So in the spiritual, in the spirit, I should say, God wants you to enter in and start seeing. God will give you your husband. God will give you your business. God will give you your car, whatever you decide you, you need. But the Lord wants you to come in. I want you to see it first. Because of the forerunner is there. Jesus Christ is there. And he's able to reveal to you what you need, when you need it. See, not 100% like, 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 like uh, I told you, that, that microwave generation, oh, I need it, I need it yesterday, I like it, I like it. And then you go, you talk, but forget about God. We have no time at all. Uh, I have about a minute. Uh, so uh, if you can give it to me in one minute, it's good. If not, then I go to somewhere else. And that is not good. Okay, so this is to help you. This is to make you winners. This is to make you overcomers. Because remember, the Lord says something amazing. He said, only the overcomer. Only the overcomers on that day will come with me. The very same way I sat at the foot, not the foot, I'm sorry, on, on, the, on, on, my father's, on my father's throne, the very same way the overcomers will also sit on my throne. Okay, so I want to impart to you guys this mentality, this scheme, this... Uh, vision of who you are today. You are a son and you are a daughter of the living God. And as you start thinking that, as you start thinking that your, your Jesus, your, your Lord Jesus Christ has already entered, has your high priest, what is it that you need? The Lord said you, 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 you have not because you have asked not. Oh, Lord, I, I, I'm sorry, but, you know, you see, you don't understand. No, no, God, the creator of the universe, doesn't understand. Of course he does. He knows before you ask. He knows what you need before you ask. But he wants you to, to listen. He wants you to see with your eyes. It could be a dream. He, he may give you a dream. He may give you a vision. But a Christian, a true Christian, is a man and or a woman who has become like Jesus the Christ. Amen? All right, let me pray for you guys. Father, thank you, Lord, for everyone is, who is watching by means of, of uh, uh, the Internet or TV. Or, Lord, bless every single one of them. Bless every single one of them. And heal those who need to be healed. I want you to put your hand like that uh, uh, against the screen, if you could, uh, as a point of contact. It, it's not magic or anything like that. But, Lord, we, as a point of contact, I'm releasing your Holy Spirit. Bless your people. Bless your people. Those who 
doesn't, who doesn't comprehend what I'm saying, illuminate their heart, open their mind, and they, they will be able to see. Those who need a healing, you know, put your hand on where it hurts or where it's bothering you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm commanding and I'm, I'm speaking to the heart of the people and to the bodies of the people. Make them whole. Make them whole now. In Jesus Christ, and those who are in need of financial situation, touch their finances. Touch their finances. Some of you, you are struggling in the, fin in the financial world. You know what? Because somewhat, somewhere, you have decided then baby no shoes are going before God. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah, well, I need to think about me first. You see, okay, the Lord is saying unto you, think about you first. And then you will be lacking. You will be lacking. I'm not preaching for me. I'm not preaching for this Revelation Church. I'm telling you the truth. You don't want to give it to me? It's fine. It's totally fine. You know, c come to Revelation Church for free. It's okay. It's fine. It's, it's going to be given to you for free. It's fine. But if you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about, the reason why you're suffering like that is because you refuse to give and to obey the word of God. So Father, bless your people and be with every single one of them and give them a good day. You have the victory. God, Jesus Christ paid the price and he has uh, uh, created this victory spirit inside of you, okay? So you have nothing to worry. You are not like the people in the world. And, and those who have COVID-19, I bind it and I destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. Take your filthy hands of the people of God. Don't even approach it, them in Jesus Christ's name. Amen? So you have a great week, and God bless you. Amen. Uh, we're just going to take the offering. Uh, if you're going to give by check, you can make it payable to Revelation Church. Um, give by text. Uh, you can give online at revelationchurchny.com slash give.